how, how do you design a fight? So I would start obviously with the script, looking at how it's written. Some, mm. some writers will write it blow by blow and some writers will just write they fight. I like to know the beats that they want to achieve, whether, there's, whether they're acting beats or camera beats or, or, or just story beats. So, you know, who's winning, who's losing, if there's anything that they want to suggest, if there's any story points that might refer to later or prior that need to be there. Um, and also it sometimes gives you an idea, especially if the director's written it or if the director's had a hand in writing, that it gives you an idea of what they what their style is, whether they're hyper violent or whether they're whether it's kind of tame or whether it's martial arty or whether it's quite quick and efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start to get a feel for the characters. Obviously, I, I read the whole script so I understand how they've got to that point, where that continues, who the characters are, what their backgrounds are. Mm -hmm. um, and and I guess my benefit having had the acting experience is that you approach it much like an actor mm. looking at a character and deciding who they are and what how they move and, and what their thought process is and you know what going into a fight what is their objective what is their what are their um, conflicts how are they how are they what are they using and what resources do they have to use to get through that obstruction yeah um, so so that approach was was how I used to work and how I still work today. Mm. Um, and then through conversation, through the script, and if there wasn't that information in the script, conversations with the director, uh, you find out, you know, all of those things, what they want to see. Sometimes you get to talk to the actors early on if, if they've already been cast, what how they move, what their mm -hmm. what their background is as a as an actor. Just to figure um, out what they're capable of, right? Yeah. So if they've had martial arts background, maybe they've done dance before, mm -hmm. maybe break dancing or something. So. I can find a language that they understand. So I will talk differently to someone who's done martial arts than I would to someone who's done dancing. There are actors that are very kind of naturally quite aggressive and you know they've done they've done aggressive roles before and they know how to throw a punch, but they don't necessarily know how to be safe. Yeah. As soon as you start teaching them the safety, they pull back twice as far. So you're then having to push the aggression but mm -hmm. maintain the safety, which is yeah. always a a balance. Once I've got that, depending on the time, ideally I'd, I'd just have a play day with concepts. So I'd, I'd get a few guys together and just, just play with different ideas. So if, mm. if it was a gun production, we'd, we'd do lots of disarms or mm. working out how you can how you can create a fight <laughs> with a gun in play, because that's uh, always but tricky. Do you work first, like when you design a fight, already like start, start designing right, and playing around with moves, do you work first with the stunt? Yeah. Before you go to actors. Yeah. 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 Mm. If if possible, if the actors are capable, very yeah. capable, and um, and obviously back back when I was doing much lower budget stuff, you didn't have much of a stunt team. You had the actors, and that was it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now it's better to come up with stuff with the stunt team because you can play stuff, play with stuff. You can change things. If you start doing something with an actor and then changing it and then changing it again, then they start getting confused. And yeah. when you get to the final day, it's it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, it also helps that you can create stuff within your environment without, as, as much as you want to hear the actor, actor's input, you don't want too much input because it starts to throw things in and you know you, you get blurry visions and, and I'm always trying to create what the director wants. Yeah. And the actor might not always be on the same page as mm -hmm. the director. So it's easier if you show them something and then and they say, so that's what we're doing. Now shut up and do your job. <laughs> well, I, I enjoy when the when the actors want to change stuff or when the actors have questions about things. Mm -hmm. So I'll show them it and they'll start to practice and they're like, oh, this doesn't feel right. And then we'll work out, is it because they're... they're, still because they're yeah, because they're not doing it right or because it just doesn't feel natural to them. Or is it because because that's not how their body moves or that's mm -hmm. not how they, they, they're, they they thought about how they would deal with that situation. Yeah. And then I'm more than happy if they say, oh, I think I'd do this, to go, yeah, if that makes sense to the fight and that makes sense in the narrative, then yeah, then, yeah let's do that instead. And I'd rather just say yes straight away than have a big argument about, oh, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Because then we can move on. Yeah. So create the concepts. Maybe if we can show the director and they can say which ones they like, which ones they don't like, then start so, to- So you them. film it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put those concepts together, create the fight, 
show that to the director, sometimes show that to the actor, get some feedback. Again, if we have time, we make some changes again, get the actors in, start training them, start teaching them everything, probably have some changes throughout that, uh, get that to the director again for some more feedback. Once it's kind of in a, in a, a place where it's set, at least to, to as far as it, it, we think it's gonna go, then we would do a previs. So that would be the stunt team's version of how you would shoot the fight. So we'd have our own cameras, we'd get all the props and as much set as we could, usually in a rehearsal space. Mm. We'd shoot it, each angle, every setup, edit it, it together, put in the sound, put in the VFX if possible, um, and then giving that to the director as, as a reference that they can choose to use or not. Mm. Some directors will want to do it their own way and they'll, their, them and their DP will have a certain style or they'll have a way of shooting it that, that they want to do. Mm. And sometimes they'll see the previews and that'll be our storyboard essentially. Yeah. So we will go, okay, we do shot one, then we do shot two, then we do shot three. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's generally a much more efficient way of doing it because it's quicker on the day. You don't have to go, oh, where are we going to put the camera? What, what are we going to shoot first? Let's do a master which you're never gonna use a master of an entire fight, but so many people still wanna yeah. do the safe master because that's how you shoot everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why, why would they want to do it their own way? Because that's, that's what you would do with everything. You know, if from all the way through the shoot, the director would turn up and the DOP and they've probably had their conversation separate to, to our yeah. department and they've decided how they're gonna shoot everything. They've decided what, they're going to shoot mm -hmm. and with fights i think in the east there's a certainly a different culture for that that the fight coordinator is is highly regarded as someone who is kind of knows what they're doing and yeah. it's a very different discipline to to shoot a fight or action and yeah. they will just hand over and there's no ego and there's no issue with it yeah over here it's different and I, it's not always an ego thing i think sometimes it's just a naivety that mm -hmm you shoot action the same way as you shoot everything else but no, because it's like for me it says like i understand that you might uh like a director and dp they can work out the style how they want to shoot the whole film i understand that but at the same time fight and action it's so very technical that you really need to hit the marks you really need to kind of like have some particular angles otherwise it will not work yeah yeah so yeah. why would you shoot yourself in the foot <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think some of it is, is ego, some of it is, is just not knowing mm -hmm. what you don't know. Yeah. Um, some of it is thinking that you can get away with it, that you can, you know, they can turn up on the day and I can turn up on the day and they'll put the camera down and, and look at me and say, is that is that going to work? And I'll mm -hmm. go, yes or no. And then they'll do the next shot and the next shot. But if if there's time and there's you have got a previous available you don't need to work out where the camera's going to go because it's already dictated and if if the previous works obviously yeah. if if there's things in it that, that need tweaking then you've got to change it but if it works then that is your storyboard that's your blueprint but when you're doing previous you you definitely need to know in advance where you're shooting right the, like the space where you're shooting what kind of like how much room you have and what ideally yeah. around and yeah. stuff, like tables and whatever yeah. yeah and that can catch you out even if you've done a recce um where you've gone to the location you've seen all this that can catch you out because maybe art department has built something that you weren't mm -hmm. expecting or it's bigger or smaller than than it was going to be or you know maybe it's it's rained and something's changed, or maybe the the wind has destroyed something, or or maybe there's some lighting that mm. uh, has affected the space. So you've got a really dark corner that you can't see anything. Or um, yeah, you know, there's always little changes, but usually that doesn't change the previous too much. I th I think filmmakers prefer the safety of having coverage mm -hmm. because again, that's what you do with a lot of other things. If you've got all those angles then you can choose how to edit it later. Yeah. And you can kind of, you, you don't have to rely on setting yourself to a, to a structure in, in prep. Mm -hmm. You can, you can get, to, get to post and go, well, I've got all these shots, all these coverage. Now I can choose how I want to put it together and I can change my mind mm -hmm. later. Or if something's not right, I can fix it because I've got other options. Whereas when you're, if you're following a previous, unless you've got a second camera, you are kind of restricted to that. So if there is a continuity error, or if something's yeah. something's gone wrong, you only have those shots. Yeah. So I do get that it ties you a bit, but you, as I said, you can have a backup 
by having a second camera so you can cut away to a close-up or you can cut away to a, mm -hmm. a different version of that shot yeah. if you need to. Because, yeah, it's because I understand, understand like the previous there is no wiggle room. Like you just do exactly shot by shot what you create. Yeah. All right, yeah. But it just, it just helps the actors because mm -hmm. when you're doing a master, the whole thing in a master and you might do a few takes of that and then you mm -hmm. do the whole thing from this side and the whole thing from this side, everyone's getting tired. Of course, yeah, because it's like, it's very physical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it is still a stunt, so every yeah. every time you do it, the risk of injury or the yeah. risk of, of, of even someone just just having a twisted mm -hmm. you know, sore muscle or something is going to increase every time you do it. Yeah. So the less you do it, the more you're going to get out of it, mm -hmm. the more the actor's energy is going to be high, 